Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Mythical back again and today we're going to be talking about mix bus compression and our goal is to create punch and glue on our overall track using a singular compressor on our mix bus. But if this is your first time and you want to stay up to date with more Logic Pro 10 tips and tricks, please consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss a beat. Okay, let's get right into it. Considering the intensity of your track or the overall dynamics of your track is really important before using your mix bus compressor. Chill tracks like singer-songwriter songs might require a low ratio of 2.1 to 1 or the heavy hitting genres like EDM, trance, heavy metal, hip hop might require a, a higher ratio of like 4.1 to 1. That's where I would start between 2 and 4 uh, on your ratio side. And also kind of keep in mind the type of compressor that you're going to use is really going to dictate like how your track is going to glue together. Um, they call this vintage VCA compressor the glue for a reason just because of how the audio breathes uh, or the compressor breathes with the incoming audio signal. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. I did a video, a really in-depth um, analysis on uh, the Logic compressors that I'll leave a link for in the video. So definitely check that out. Um, but let's get going. Let's take a listen to this thing and let's start playing with the compressor. So after we've chosen the correct ratio or the appropriate ratio for our intensity of their track, we want to try to mess with the attack time. And I would say anywhere between 10 milliseconds and 30 milliseconds is great. So always keep in mind slow attack and fast release when it comes to your um, mix bus compression. So. Um, let's take a listen to the track and I'm just going to play around with the attack and the release and you're going to hear some pretty nasty um, dynamic changes when I start making this attack time really fast. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to drop the attack time to zero. Listen to that. Completely squashing the transients. And the opposite happens as I increase it. Basically nothing happens at the maximum. So I'm going to keep it right around 10. It seems to be re reacting well right around there. Now listen to what happens with the release, because that would be our next step. The volume drops as I increase the uh, release time. The compressor seems to react really well between 80 and 100 milliseconds. I'm just trying to watch that needle dance. Okay. Let's go 81. Now let's see what happens when we do the threshold here. Yeah. Pretty nasty. Keep in mind. A nice, a nice gain reduction of like one to three is perfect. And do this on the loudest part of your song, like the hook or the chorus. So this is like the loudest part of my song. And this is where I'm kind of dialing in the compressor. This is where we're going to get the, the best um, results. Okay, right about there it seems to be pretty good. So let's A-B this. So let's turn the compressor off. And we'll turn the compressor on. So there is volume reduction and we're gonna want to use the makeup gain to make up for that, okay? So I'm gonna just increase it to one. I'm gonna turn it off. Compressor is off. Compressor is back on. Off, on, on. 
So it's not going to be exact. You want to get it, you know, pretty much in the ballpark of uh, making up the the volume loss by just using your makeup gain. And I really hope that you found this little tutorial helpful. I think the, the the use of a mix bus compressor can really add overall excitement and some beauty to your uh, mix. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Are you using mix bus compression on your track? So if you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you didn't, hit that dislike button. Otherwise, I will see you next time.